The reason why I study leaf types is actually it's a very important in carbon cycling, also in global biogeochemical geochemical cyclings. And also it's very important for global restoration practices as we have to know how many different types across the globe and what should we plan in the future for, for any like nature-based solutions. Differences in the leaf types, especially in leaf forms, whether you have needle leaf or broad leaf, or whether you drop leaf in your, during an uh, unfavorable season or not, is actually sh shaping the way of carbon cycling because the leaf is actually a major way of absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere and either store it in the plant or store it in the soil. Different leaf types actually have different pace or different styles of metabolism. So we need this to need to understand the pace, how the CO2 get into the, the plants and the leaves is actually the gate. So I use the two traits of the leaves, like leaf form and leaf habit. I can classify the global trees into four types, which are broadleaf evergreen, broadleaf deciduous, needle leaf evergreen and needle leaf deciduous. So of all the three trees, trees across the globe, the needle leaf evergreen trees actually compose the major part of all the global trees, followed by uh, broadleaf evergreen and broadleaf deciduous and needle leaf deciduous, which is the least part across the globe. Well, actually it's very different. Uh, it's very different and interesting if we look at the above ground biomass. So using the very current published uh, result of above ground biomass of trees, uh, I was able to see how many carbon actually captured by different types of trees. Interestingly, the major needle leaf evergreen trees actually didn't uh, store that much carbon. The major carbon pool or the carbon storage is actually coming from uh, broadleaf evergreens, which is actually suddenly a, you know, a discrepancy. It also alerted us to uh, take more care of the broadleaf evergreen trees, which are located in Mediterranean and tropical regions. Uh, these are very important in you know, carbon storage. So the problem is whether the future climate will, well, will in favor of the current plants or in the future the current plants will be under stress due to climate change. Uh, we, and we've, we found like up to one third of the global forest is actually under stress if we, uh, if we look at the future climate in, by the end of the century. It shows a huge, a huge red map. Red means stress. Uh, across the globe, which is not a good news, but actually an important message to uh, to us, to the local practitioners, to the policy makers. For the local forest management, it's a very important uh, message, especially for advice, sustainable management. And for restorations, it's going to be another thing that we, if we want to look at in the long term, in the long term monitoring, we probably will have to put climate change into consideration.